we know. If we start yawning while you're talking, don't be offended. I knew a little bit about it, but... We're here to listen. Okay. So Bill's going to be doing most talking. Okay, I'm just getting the agenda down. You okay with that? that I'm, I'm great with it. I just well, I thought now would be a good time to talk about it while we're Kevin Todd.
Paul, I met you the other night and yes. shook your hand. We did not get a chance to talk. Right. And first, I want to thank all five of you and Cindy for coming tonight. This is short notice. I know that's not a typical thing. Uh, there are two reasons for that we want to talk about. One, our subjects are very important to the future of this committee. And secondly, there's some urgency to what we are trying to do. Uh, and uh, that, that, that is reflected in our request to talk tonight. We've made real progress the last two days on several subjects. We want to get your guidance about these subjects and hopefully your blessing. And we can move forward with a lot of things. One of the things that's most gratifying to me, we have two dozen young leaders in this community under 40 who have met with us, signed on. They're coming literally out of the woodwork to talk to Bill Wade and me, uh, wanting to help, wanting to get involved in some ideas we have for Coffee Bill. Uh, we, we want this to be driven by the young people. We want to help. We've got some experience. We've got some wherewithal and financial ability to help a bit. But uh, with the commission's guidance, uh, the young people in this town want things to happen. I think we should give them some rope and see what they can do with our guidance. So that's the background. I was born here, 1952, Coffeeville Hospital. I went to field camp in 1970. I'm a lawyer in New York City now, a trial lawyer. Uh, I just said, and I'll make it very brief, I've lived in Chicago, New York for the last 35 years. And where am I at 66 years old? I'm healthy at Coffeeville. My heart is still here. My parents lived here their whole lives. They're buried here. My wife's from here. So I'm an outsider, maybe, but I'm an insider inside. And, I, and we all are. And so let me just say that. So we have the last three days been working on what we have branded as Coffee Bill's Reawakening. And those words were chosen carefully. Coffee Bill's Reawakening is a possessive. Coffee Bill owns this. It's not Coffee Bill. It's Coffee Bill's Reawakening. Uh, uh, why Reawakening? This is a town with a tremendous history, a tremendous spirit, uh, a soul in this town that I have, I've lived all over the country that I don't see since I left and I haven't seen until I come back. And for reasons that relate to the difficulties of small town America, some of that stuff has just kind of slowed down. The momentum has been lost in the town. And we want to reawaken the great things in this town. We're not trying to tell people what to do. We're trying to find out what makes sense and work with the people who live here and give them our guidance that we can give to make things happen. Uh, there, there are three or four things we have done, and I want to list them for you and then give you a couple of specifics about them action items we undertook today, hopefully, that you'll be comfortable with. Okay. Uh, uh, I am focused, and I'd like to talk tonight about downtown Coffee Bell. Uh, Peggy Steele uh, deserves all the credit in the world for leading the charge with other great people in town, many of whom are here tonight, uh, trying to uh, uh, get the Midland Project up and running. That is the crown jewel of our reawakening efforts in this town, and nothing I'm about to say takes away from that. But I have said to Peggy and others, I don't understand how the Midland or the neighborhood beautification on Ninth Street and other places can ever succeed in this town with a dead downtown area. I don't see it. I think 8th and 9th Street have to change. I know Tyson is being looked at. I'm not going to express any position on whether it's good or bad to bring Tyson here. I don't live here. But I will say to you, I don't believe that Tyson or any other big company coming in from out of town with a bunch of jobs will turn this town around with a dead downtown. People who come here aren't going to want to live here. It, it, people aren't going to want to visit here. I think that the foundation of reawakening Coffee Bill is 8th and 9th Street. That's just my own personal view. But if you disagree with that, I'd love to have a conversation with you because I think I can convince you I'm right. Okay, what do we do? We have met with 17 owners of properties in the last 54 hours, including the esteemed vice mayor, uh, about uh, what's going on in town, what they're doing with their properties, uh, what aspirations, if any, they have for them. Uh, we have we have toured the Columbia Drug Building and the fantastic upstairs. I lived here a long time. I've never been upstairs. I uh, We spent time with Joe Ferguson and toured the Dewberry space. Uh, we toured, uh, went around Jim's space over at the Terminal Building, a number of different places in town. And we see what the problems are. And let me tell you what I've been saying is a mantra, and I won't say it once to you all tonight. We don't need to hear from the problem spotters. We know there are problems. We want to be problem solvers. And uh, I'm not saying any of this is easy, but boy, it's doable. And we want a little bit of blessing and rope from this commission, and we think we can help the town. One, involved, one aspect of this involves funding. There are outside sources of funding that we are looking at. Uh, uh, we 
we're just getting started on this, but there are three or four different things where some meaningful money is involved to perhaps help from the outside. A second source of funding is from the inside. Bill Wade, through his family foundation, me through my family foundation, are giving money to Coffeeville in various areas, and we'll continue to do so. We're not trying to finance all of this. We're willing to help. And we're reaching out to others around the country from Coffeeville to raise funds for the Midland Project and also for the reawakening of downtown Coffeeville. Another thing that we've heard about a lot is that down the, the, the young people in this town say the following two things to us. And I know both of these are difficult subjects. I'm not suggesting it's easy. But we had this meeting yesterday at Bob and Denise York's building, and we heard two things that really resonate with Bill. <clears throat> the first we hear is people saying, uh, we're not going to spend money to improve and resonate, uh, improve our buildings here in downtown Coffeeville until the tax burden changes in this town. I'm not criticizing anybody about what our taxes are. I'm telling you what we're hearing. Uh, one gentleman who does not want to be identified has a Important space in downtown Coffeeville said his tax, he, he spent $78,000 improving his property, and he said in the last 11 years his taxes have quadrupled, his property taxes. And he said, I'm just not putting any more money into this. Uh, I've got a business, it could be better, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to be status quo until we get some kind of breaks. We heard that from several young people who run the restaurants and who run the salons in town. And so one of the things we want to work on, and I'm not here today to give you a proposal, Talk to Mark Hall, who's been very helpful so far with us. One of the things we're doing is focusing on ways to relieve the tax burden consistent with the interests of the community. Uh, we met with Paul Kreitz two days ago, talked to Paul, gave him some ideas to think about, and we asked him to set up a meeting with your law firm in Wichita. Uh, and I said, I want about two weeks before the meeting so we can kind of think through options and give those to Paul, and then Paul can give them in advance to the Wichita lawyers and we can talk. But at some point, we're going to come back to this body that runs the town, and we're going to ask for approval of ways to reduce the tax burden going forward for a period of time on 8th and 9th Street. And let me just give you a perspective, uh, respectfully. Uh, anybody who says we can't do that, uh, we, 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 we've, got, we've got a declining tax base, we need to keep raising taxes, people in another part of Coffeeville won't like it, because why give 8th and 9th Street a break when they can't get a break out uh, on the west side of town? Here's the answer to that. If we don't recover downtown Coffeeville, we're not going to have a community in 20 or 30 years. I watched, I come back every year. You know, I love this place. Every year, it's kind of going the wrong way. We've got to turn the ship. Once you turn the ship, then people start getting on board. And this community and the marketplace will take over, and there'll be more people wanting to do business in town, have ownership of, of shops in town, restaurants. We need more restu good restaurants in this town taverns in this town, they're nice. If you need all of that stuff, if people see it's moving in the right direction, they'll do that. We've got to start in downtown Coffeeville. And, and so when we come to you in the future and say we need some tax help, uh, uh, you obviously are going to do what you think is in the best interest of the community, but I'm going to try to tell you at that time why it just doesn't make sense to say it is in the best interest of the community not to revitalize downtown. It's got to happen. It's just got to happen. That's point one. Point two is cleanliness. We heard all kinds of statements at the meeting at the Yorks yesterday from different property owners, interestingly, most of them younger. And it goes as follows. Uh, we can't get people to come into our stores because they've got to walk through the cigarette butts and soda cans, pop cans. And so uh, uh, I said, well, you know, uh, Peggy and Bill and I will uh, talk to uh, City Manager Hall about this and see what his perspective is. And we met with Mark this morning. And I'm not being critical of Mark at all. He's been great. But here's what Mark told us. He said, well, you know, the practice in Coffeeville, Bill, is that when, to keep the downtown clean, the city is responsible for the streets, but the property owners are responsible for the sidewalks. And I said, Mark, that may be fine in a thriving downtown, but in a city where half the buildings are empty and the owners are absentees in Tulsa or Bartlesville, they're not going to keep those sidewalks clean. The city has got to step up for a few years and keep Coffeeville clean. We task a group of six young people. We're calling them the Young Leaders of Coffeeville group. Uh, Lisa Sheck is part of that. I don't know all the names. I'm sorry. I can get them for you. Scott Tackman. I want to bring the Acme. I know the Tackman family, and they need to be more involved in this. We've got six people. We met with them today over the phone at 2 o'clock, and they are as excited as can be. Billy Sally is here. She is on the group. She was a 
this meeting with us yesterday. We, we couldn't get over how excited she was. And they all said to us, we said, uh, what, what do you need downtown? They said, we need a couple of things. Uh, we need trash cans. Uh, and I don't mean plastic tubs from Walmart. We need good-looking trash cans, which ought to be branded Coffeeville's Reawakening all over town. We want this branding to go everywhere in town. And they said, we need benches in town, like we have around the tavern. We ought to have those on 8th and 9th Street. I'll come to what we, our meetings today about that in a minute. And we need cleaner streets and sidewalks. And so one of the things we want from the commission is guidance and blessing on being able to use a, a modest amount of funds in the town to, to on, on an ongoing basis, not one time, keep downtown Coffeeville clean. I come in from out of town, and you, you drive through downtown, and you see dirty streets, and what that sends the message is, it's a town that doesn't care. I know people care here. I'm telling you the message. You go through a, a town, you go through Neodice or Independence, love coffee bill, not the other shame in the house, and drive through the downtown, you can eat off the sidewalks are so clean. And that sends a message. These people care about downtown. Let's get the downtown streets clean. Now, it's not all city funding. We talked today with Lisa from Leadership Coffee Bill. We wanted to brief her. We briefed Candy. At the, we met with her today. We're briefing everybody about what we're doing. And Lisa said, that is great. She said, a lot of people who are part of Leadership Coffee Bill would love to volunteer and help in this cleanup. They believe in that. And so I have asked the young leadership group to appoint a leader on this issue of cleanliness to work with Mark, who knows all about what I'm about to say, and to get the necessary funding, which will be modest, to get some benches, to get some trash cans, branded, beautiful branding, and to get clean streets and sidewalks in this town on a systematic basis. I don't know whether it's once a week, twice. I want clean streets in this town, downtown. That's going to help us when we start saying to potential business owners, we'll give you some financial support. I want to say in a, a beautiful downtown with clean streets. Uh, I think that's very important. So benches, just a, a local anecdote. Uh, out of the blue, we're over at the Chamber of Commerce, and there's a young guy named Justin Rex Rex Rexwinkle, Rex Rexwinkle, Rex Rex who has a business, and he, he's going to help us with something I'll describe to you in a minute. And he's got a, a a young colleague, an assistant, whose name is Derek. Derek Davis. And Derek hears us talking to this leadership group by phone on the young people and what we want them to be doing in town and about the benches. And he said, I can help. Let me volunteer. He says, I'm a craftsman. And he said, I would love to be involved in designing some benches that are attractive and that are Coffeeville made and that go around 8th and 9th Street. Let me help. And I said, well, that's fine. You have to commission getting wood. And then I said, you know, I've got an idea. We spent an hour with Joe Ferguson, an interesting man, but an hour with Joe Ferguson yesterday, and he proudly took us all around all his wood, the beautiful pieces of, why not work with Joe Ferguson and use Coffeeville wood to build Coffeeville benches and let them, let them put their names on these. Let, let's have some pride and craftsmanship in downtown and let these young people get involved with Joe as a mentor in putting this stuff together. I don't know what the cost is going to be, but the word modest applies to it. And for what we're getting, bang for the buck, it seems to me a pretty good decision. And he's all excited about helping. I said, we're meeting with the commission tonight. Let's see if they are okay with this kind of thing. But it's that kind of local involvement that excites us. Let me give you the next one, then I'll be quiet and listen to your questions. So we're sitting at the, uh, uh, at the Chamber of Commerce. Well, actually, we're at KGGF today, meeting with Mark. My dad ran KGGF for years. And so I did a video about life and my dad, Bob Pratt, and all that. And we were down there, and Mark came to meet us. And somebody showed us a mock-up, just a, a fancy mock-up of the uh, elevator. It used to be ham elevator, I don't know what, big elevator, grain elevator in town. And somebody had done a, a, a mock-up on computer of the American flag. And it's it, eight stories high. You can see it coming for coffee over 10 miles. And I said, that's spectacular. What would it cost to do that? And the answer was a quarter million dollars. I said, okay, well, that's for later day. But I said, you know, that, that, that raises an idea. We have all these Don Spray murals in town. Every time I drive, my, I, I kept my family home. I have a home here, 608 Edgewood Drive. Uh, Troy Thompson at the refinery takes care of it for me. He was a friend of my father's before he passed. So I've got a home here. Pay taxes and all of that. And I drive down A Street to come down here. And there's this big, huge, red brick area on the side of the security title building on A Street. You cannot come down Coffeeville East on A Street and not see that huge space. 
And I said, let's create a mural. Coffee Bill's reawakening and a huge mural taking all that space all the way to the alley uh, with historical things about Coffee Bill and Coffee Bill Future. And let's get this young leadership committee to take the lead in working with who does the mural to design it and have you all approve it and have us become real. And everybody said, that sounds good. Who's going to do this? Don Spriggs passed away. We go down to the college Orschwein Hall and we meet Mike DeRosa. Mike is all over wanting to do this with us. And I don't know if he's going to chuck. I said, Mike, we'll pay for your material. We'll figure out a way to pay for the materials. Uh, if you need a charge, charge us as a town thing. Uh, be, as, be as good as you can to us. Uh, and he said, I, I've decided to do this. I said, put your name up. If the Midland Project succeeds, your name will be up on that wall for 100 years with a beautiful, that you cannot miss driving into Coffee Bill from the east. Okay, we want to get things started fast, and, and he can't do this till the summer. So how do we start it fast? We met with Justin and Derek and said, can you guys create some temporary signage that is a banner 8 to 10 feet high, white background, blue text, which I'll describe, and red, so it's red, white, and blue. And the banner is going to say, Coffee Bill's reawakening is started, dot, dot, dot. So it's just, it's in the process of getting underway. And we're cre want to create a logo for Coffee Bill's reawakening. Now, I want to brand this town all over the town. Red, white, and blue. Derek is going to design something. We'll show it to the commission. Okay. Uh, and that will go up on the banner. And that's, everybody said, that's great. So so in the next week, people in town are going to say, this is Saturday. We're not going to wait till summer. Uh, this is going to start with this professional-looking banner. Debbie Carter walked up to me this afternoon and said, I heard about this banner. She said, uh, you know, I've got my, my business is at the intersection of 166 and 169. People come into Coffee Bill from both directions. What Would you guys be okay if, if, if you uh, put the same banner up on my building? And I said, that would be great, subject to the commission. And, and so we're, we're, we've got a plan to have a beautiful mural. I'd like to have several downtown over time. Uh, uh, together with these banners right away to get things started. Okay, so that second area is clean up of Coffeeville after fun. The third area is promotions. Uh, 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 I live in New York City, and people ask me where I'm from, and I say Coffeeville, Kansas. And nine out of ten people who know Coffeeville, some don't, obviously, nine out of ten know it because of what? The others are Coffee Bill, Red Raven football. That, that's the second thing. Uh, I know there's mixed feelings about the Dalton Defenders Museum. It should be about the Daltons. I know the, all of those politics in town. But I don't. I think there ought to be some festival once a year in the summertime uh, featuring, uh, I mean, live bands, outdoor barbecue, down, this is all downtown, uh, featuring the Daltons with some history. Uh, uh, Ferguson, John uh, uh, Ferguson has got uh, all kinds of memorabilia. He's very, it's really pretty nice stuff about the Daltons. Uh, I said, why don't we combine that with what the museum has and have a festival once a year? All these young people who are merchants downtown like the idea. Uh, uh, I'm not trying to tell people what to do, but let's start promoting downtown, even before the businesses get in, and make it a place where people like to come. We're going to have cleaner streets. We're going to have uh, Coffee Bill reawakening everywhere. We're going to start having this art up, up around town. We're going to have the buzz on the Midland project. And then we're going to start trying to get people into town with some, some financial support. And I don't mean over the next five years. I mean over the next six months. We're, we're, uh, I will respectfully say to you, this is a once-in-a-generation opportunity for Coffee Bill. And I'm, I don't mean to be falsely humble about this. You've got a group of people who used to live here who've got some wherewithal and some experience, starting with her. And you've got a bunch of people in Coffee Bill of every age, including a lot of young people who seem to like what we're talking about. Let's pull together and, and make this happen. We may fail. I'd rather try and fail than not try. I don't think we'll fail, but we could. Last point, I'll be quiet. Uh, I've seen Coffee Bill over the years. And I believe one of the problems to getting things happening in Coffee Bill is there are too many competing interests. There's this organization. Well, they don't like what this organization is doing. So-and-so didn't know so-and-so was. We've got to get rid of that. And I spoke passionately about that at every meeting I've been in the last three days. There is one boat in town. Everybody needs to get on it and start rowing in the same direction for the next couple of years. It can compete five years from now. Let's go in one boat. And if you don't want to be on the boat, fine. Get out of the way. Don't get in the way. And I, I really think, and she thinks as well, we, we, can, we can help this town. 
this doesn't have to be we do everything. If things start to turn in the right direction in this town, you watch what happens. Right. It'll have its own life. We can step away and it'll continue to go up. Right. In any event, we're going to need a little bit of money in the short run for the cleaning, a little bit of money in the short run for the park we're talking about, the, the, this initial signage. Uh, ultimately come back to you on some tax issues. We're not asking for blessings on that tonight, but we're telling you, boy, I hope you guys are receptive to that for downtown. Uh, and, and tonight I'd like to get your blessing on what we're trying to do with the cleaning so Mark can work with this young group and get that started this week. I don't mean in March. Uh, and I'd like to get approval for the uh, banners in a couple places downtown to say coffee bills for awakening starting dot, dot, dot. These will be good banners. Right. You will see them every day when you come to your office. These are not small data. That's what we want approval for. We want your guidance on all of this. And any questions you have for us, we'd love to answer. That's it. So, wow. <laughs> itself once That's we get right. this going.
already into that. And and the, the thing is, is I would I would encourage you to push forward past that negativity because sometimes it it takes its toll on you, and it has taken its toll on me, and, and it is sometimes you just gotta do what's right, and and I think what you guys are doing is right. Let me tell you what I said in the big group yesterday at New York's. Uh, I I run a law office in New York with six hundred. I deal with a lot of people who have a lot of different views about everything. And if you try to please everybody, you're going to please nobody. Yeah, you're right. And what I said to the group yesterday, I said, if any, and Jim was there, I said, if anybody in this group thinks that they're going to get everything they want out of this effort to reawaken coffee, they'll get to leave now. Everybody's got to have skin in this. Everybody's got to give a little to get a little. This is a one boat community. We're going to get in and row together. And I didn't say this then, but I will say to people, if somebody wants to be negative, God bless them. It's a free country. First Amendment's valuable in the country, but I just ask that they step aside, don't be in the way. And I'll tell you what's going to happen. Once we start moving forward, some of those naysayers are going to say, you know, this is okay. Yeah, We've got to get started. But so that's I, good advice. Thank so, you. So, and you guys are far wiser than I am. I'm just I sharing some of my experience yeah. of, of uh, my little time here in, in Coffeyville. Are you from here? Actually, yes, I am. Born in Yes, it does. Um, the thing is, is that I'm 100% behind you guys. My skin's in the game. The thing is, is for this downtown cleanup, it comes to funding. And obviously, we can't take any any binding action tonight. But I'd like to instruct, you know, per se, our city manager, find us a source of funding and bring it back to us on the next agenda. And let's just get this thing going. Because the, the longer we saying talking does one thing and, and money walks or whatever the thing is. It's probably, not, probably not whatever. But something like that. Before Jim and Justin comment, I want to reemphasize one point. If there's one thing you remember from us tonight, uh, uh, it, it, you know, I, 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 I think that uh, I, I believe that when I first met Peggy in November, she didn't know what to do with me. She said I was a disruptor. <laughs> We've become friends since, but uh, I, I, I will debate anybody in this room or in this town on the proposition that this town is not going to get where you want to get with a dead downtown. It's not going to happen, and you're going to manage a town to oblivion over the next 20 or 30 years. And I'll be here, I'll, I'll be out of the cemetery, but it's going to be oblivion. And what the, the foundation of turning this town around is 89th Street. I believe that to my core. And if any of you don't, when we come back to you for help on taxing and other things, I'd like to sit down over a cup of coffee and go through it and just talk to you about it, because I think that's right. And I think if you look at small, I've got a place out on the West Coast, I spent a little time, I see the whole country, and there are some small towns that have turned around, and I have never seen one that didn't start with their downtown. Humboldt, Kansas, and they've done some good things starting with downtown. Pittsburgh did some things downtown. Coffee Bill's better than both of those places, but we learned you've got to have a foundation spend time, they're comfortable, businesses want to be part of, and we're going to have to hopefully find some fun, you know, a few funds. We'll, we'll privately raise some, but we need your help. That's not tonight's issue, but we're going to come back to that. One thing I would like to ask you, um, so I'm the facilitator for Leadership Coffee, but we were teaching today when you text Lisa, and she asked me, she said, can I step out? I said, yeah, I got this. So she came out and wanted to talk to you. Good. Um, we struggle with getting alumni engaged. What I would like to do is coordinate uh, alumni dinner, something like that, and have you come and talk to them. Um, to kind of ignite that energy with the alumni. Um, if a lot of this is dependent on those young leaders that have been through leadership, we need to make sure that they feel that excitement. Uh, F uh, completely willing to do that. We are in addition to that, not in lieu of it, uh, putting together what Peggy, who's organized and leads us all here, is called the class challenges for the various classes. I'm a 1970 grad, Bill's 68. Uh, Tom Bowser I was a 64 grad. I had dinner with Tom and his wife, Judy, in Kansas City Monday night. Tom was the CEO of Blue Cross Blue Shield nationally for several years, and 
Kansas City CEO for 11 years, Blue Cross, very successful man, lost coffee bill. He came in November. Uh, we, we, we know some people around the country who are coffee bill natives, and they may not be as committed as Bill and I are and Peggy, but they're committed. Mm -hmm. And, and we're, we're going to have some class challenges to some of the field chemin classes from, say, 64 to 72. That is in addition, Justin, to what you're talking about. Also want to support leadership coffee bill. I was very impressed with Lori Lisa today. Yeah. And she talked about getting involved in this cleaning coffee bill up and helping and volunteering. Yeah. So it cuts yeah. down the cost for the town. All wonderful stuff. But you tell us what you need from us in terms of revving up your base. Yeah. And uh, we can do that for you. We can just, work with you. You just let me know how much notice you need and we'll make it work. A oh, while. Wow. Okay. <laughs> My wife's having knee surgery on March 18th. I got to take care of her. I would. Oh, wow. But here, I'll, I'll get back. Okay. I want him here, too. So it's 64 to 90. What's that? Yeah, it's 64 to 90. Yeah, it's 64 to 90. So it's a little bit closer. Oh, 64 to 95, the class challenge. 40 years, yeah. But that, that's a big yeah. job. We've got a lot of people who've committed. Yeah. Bill and Tom Warburton from Coffee Bill are going to head up the 68 challenge. Uh, I'm going to head up with a couple of my friends the 70 challenge. Tom Bowser's going to head up the 64 challenge. That's Peggy's question. Right? Justin, your point is right. You can rev people up more in person than an email. Yeah. And if we could help with your leadership coffee bill group to talk about what we'd like to do and the help that we need, uh, we'll be we'll, we'll work with them. Absolutely. Yeah. But as much notice as you can. How many people do you think are involved in the alumni group? About Ooh. approximately. It's been going for 30 years. Yeah. Um, and each class is, you know, there's some smaller years, but around 15 to 20 per class, so. So 300 people, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Wow, that'd be great. I mean, they're not all still around here, obviously, um, but, I mean, we have a, oh. we have a long list. So. What a great, is that critical mass of people? So, Cindy, Cindy has our, yeah, all of our recent. contact information, emails, cell great numbers, idea. whenever you want to reach out and tell us when you want to do this, let us know, and I promise you we'll move things around as best we can and be here when you want us to. Are you supportive generally of what we're doing? You wanted to get the brass hats in. <laughs> <laughs> yes or no? I like bottom lines. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Good. Now, I, I've talked a little bit to Jim already, so he, he kind of knew what we were going to say then. Okay. A lot of good people in this room who care about coffee bill. You know, this talk, first of all, I want to thank everybody for what you've done the last few days. Uh, I've been traveling a lot in the last few decades, and, and I've learned a lot about these old buildings and old downtowns. Some of you might remember, but, uh, well, first I want to thank you guys. I've learned a lot about what Janie's been doing. We had a meeting in the Osage room. Two of the commissioners were there. Learned a lot. That's where I got, got kicked off. Then I left town for a day and a half and came back, and I got tuned in with a little bit over at Peggy's house tonight. And can I say the one omission I is how about she's the MVP in town, as far as I'm concerned. She's done terrific. She's helped us so much. And we asked her to come tonight to sit with us. Just, just want to give her the credit she deserves. Go ahead, Jim. Well, we had a two-hour meeting, and I learned a lot from Janie about what she There's so many people in this room that care about Caulfield and have worked on things. And, I, I mean, I learned a lot about what Janie has been doing, and it just it wowed me. And, uh, I, you know, you guys came back. Dale, you're here. I got to meet you. I knew your dad, Bernard. Great guy. Uh, if, if you're half the guy he is, you're a good man. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad. <laughs> Trust me, he is. And I, I can tell you are, and you know I said that with you. My brother uh, and I were saying that about each other at 25. <laughs> <laughs> just be a <laughs> But, uh, you know, I learned a lot in that two-hour meeting. And we learned a little bit more tonight. And, uh, you know, I love the old downtown coffee bill. I, I didn't want the Mel Supply building to go, but the roof just fell in, and, and, and that happened. I was the only man fighting that deal because I love the downtown ambiance, like on the East Coast and Europe and, you know, Germany and all that. I just really fell in love with the old buildings. Got the terminal building. 
see something happen with downtown Coffeyville. I've got some money invested. I know there's people out here that have actually fixed up some more buildings. Yes. And uh, Crystal was in our meetings. And her family put a lot of money in that building, which happened to be the same size as my building. Built terminal buildings on historic registry of places. Bill Curtis. Uh, I mean, this thing ain't about me and my building, but it's about downtown Coffeyville. But Bill Curtis said that building is the key to downtown. You can talk to him about it. He was, he, Bill Curtis's idea for downtown Coffeyville uh, is built around the Daltons. And, that, and, you, and some of you might know he put together a, a documentary about the Dalton gang. Okay. And I, I, I've always envisioned, I love going into terminal buildings. People love going to these downtowns. Most of you probably know whether you go from Houston to Tulsa to the East Coast, wherever, you know, downtown Denver. These old buildings are just the draw. And, you know, I've been thinking this reawakening for, for trying on that building for 21 years. I know it's not much now, but I got a $50,000 roof on it. And the roof went on the mill supply, and that roof was gone. Now, that building was gone in five or six years. I mean, it could have been saved, but it was a lot more money. And it didn't happen with the owners and everything. But I want to see this downtown as much as anybody. I'm vested, and I love the old downtowns. You know, Crystal did it with her building. Uh, it was a fire that fell in. That you just, you guys, I, I tell everybody, go see it, go see it. Nobody goes to see it. We love to show it to you. But I just love these old downtown buildings. And I, your comment about 8th Street, 9th Street, that you're right. The Coffeyville needs it. That, that element of the downtown, I, I don't know how many people know that in Coffeyville. It's probably, they know it, but they don't know it. And that's something I think we're missing because I don't hear that from the people enough. So I, I think I hear it. And, uh, you know, it's just we got millions of dollars here, Bill. You're here. I think I said something to you in the other meeting. We need more people like you that are positive attitude. And we've got some coming. I'm glad they're coming. Okay? I told the lawyer, the guys who built that apartment building across the street in front of the commission, that I love downtown Coffeyville, and they laughed at me. I mean, this deal's about a labor of love for everybody that's doing this. It's not about an ROI. We talked about it the other day in the meeting. There's no way you're going to put a million dollars in a building or, and really get a lot of return on your investment. But it will help the whole town. We need some anchor. I don't know what the anchor is. Maybe it's the middle. I'm into the middle deal. My money's going to be going to my building. I feel like it needs to be more than one anchor. The middle's nice. It might be the icing on the cake. What you call it, the crown jewel. But I feel my building and some other buildings. There's lots of buildings. But the old terminal building is the key. That's why I bought it and that's what I want and I'm planning on doing it. I told you the other day with the whole commission and the whole group that I might sell it or put, maybe we can get some people involved in it in the future. But this is millions of dollars will it happen after tonight. I know probably 50% of the people out of this room are saying we're out there that reads Andy's or Kim's paper. Oh, it'll go away. It's, it's just it's talk and it'll go away. We have to get the money to, to go in to make this thing work. I mean, we've got it. We've got the Fair Park and the Park Board is trying to get some money for that, and we're not we haven't we haven't addressed that with Bill, and they're wanting some money for our parks, and we haven't been able to come up with. It. So our town is our tax revenue has been tough. So we got some hurdles. I'm with you. I'm in. I'm gonna I'm gonna do all I can. Uh, and I and I know this commission wants everybody loves talk with us in this room. I know it, and I think we need to have an agenda. We need to meet a couple times a year. Peggy's been great for Coffeyville. She's terrific for Coffeyville. And, you know, I'm glad to see some of you guys coming back that I never knew any of you. Or I knew Tom Warburton, but I'm, like, I'm glad to see some money come back to this town. I'm hoping that we can do some things that will work. So you might not get a return on the investment, but maybe we can get close. And that's what I want to see happen. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. And, uh, I have a question. Go ahead, Peggy. So at what point? recognize that economic development is the development of the downtown. And until we develop an area where people who are thinking about moving to Coffeyville can come into our town and look at it and say, you know, this is a cool town I want to move to. Cool 
restaurants, cool because taverns, I don't care clean what streets. What we do with Bidco, whether it's Tyson or IBM or Amazon or Bidco, whatever we want to call it, until we recognize and understand in our very fiber, in our hearts and souls, that economic development is lifestyle development and the development of downtown, we're going to go nowhere. And the commission our primary message tonight. And you guys have money for economic development and you really have to go back and look at your budgets and you have to look at your dollars and you have to think this through because let me tell you, this is an opportunity you will never have again. And one of the things that we see over and over again in town <coughs> is that the leadership has to join with an innovative risk-taking Said, and I want to pick up on one thing you said about the importance of the old buildings, and this is, I guess, selfish. My dad ran KGGF for years before the KGGF building was built, the radio station operated out of the journal building. I remember as a young kid seeing my dad there. His desk in the journal is sitting in my study in Rapid Chai and Kempton. And I have great memories of the journal building. I learned today while the KGGF, the journal building, is empty. Somebody said, I'm not sure it's going to be standing. I would like to be able to speak to this commission before any of the old great buildings in town, and I've really got the journal on that list. Anybody suggest tearing those things? That's, that's our heritage. That's like the post office, the journal, the Midland, the terminal. That's, this is the, if Coffeeville loses its heritage, the soul is gone. So I hope nobody wants to tear down. If they're not being used, give us time to develop them. Don't tear them down. Well, you know, you know, and we, we don't have all night here. You know that what happens is the roof goes, and the next thing you know, it's beyond. But right. just like the mill supply bill, it happens to all these buildings. You're on the East Coast. You know how this. Of course, a lot of those buildings have been taken care of for the last 50 years. And they're all up and nice. But to the Midwest, they get old. Nobody's got any money. That's what's going to happen to that building. I'll tell you right now, that building, the roof's going to start leaking. And then the next thing you know, it's about to repair. Nobody's going to put two, three, four, five million dollars in it, whatever the number is. I mean, I'd love to see them too. I love, we love these old buildings. So what action do we need, and why are we here? So tonight, uh, uh, as I said earlier, we would like your blessing, and it sounds like the astute comments that we've gotten from each of you uh -huh. probably have it, that we can work particularly with our long, young leadership group of six 20- and 30-year-old types of town who are bus future business leaders to work with Mark and to put together a plan that is, that is responsible and prudent but that gets the job done to clean up downtown Coffee Bill and keep it clean. That's the first request. The second is for the very modest funding for the large banners on A Street coming down, the security title building and over near the 166-169 corridor intersection to be able, I don't, I don't even know how much, I don't think Justin and his people are going to charge as much. They want to help us, but there'll be a little expense to get the commission support for that and to plant the seed that we're coming back to talk about some money for downtown Coffee Bill and to plant the seed that it's the foundation to the future of this town. I just, it, I just think it is. So that's why we hear those three things. One is just the information and then the two blessings we're looking for. Approvals. Yeah, my blessing. so far and he, he is committed to work with us and he's he's got the can do mindset with us. Yeah. So we appreciate his efforts. And he will be our you know obviously our touch. We'll work through Mark. Yep, yeah, work through Mark and he can provide that information to the commission and, and then uh, uh, you get know, back to the one thing I said we hadn't talked about better till now I heard, I'll just throw this out there. I'm okay with it. that's what he wants to do, but I'd rather see something painted on a building. Okay, so, that's long term. Oh no, but that's yeah. gonna happen. Short -term. Short -term. Yeah. Mike DeRose yeah. can't do that because he teaches yeah. until anyway, school's out. Right. He is committed well, I, don't, I wouldn't mind waiting a little longer, but if you guys want no. me to go. Jim, no, let me tell you. I'm just, just threw it out there. Let, let me tell you the I'm thing. The one, you. I'm just one off on that. Let me, you, you, you're, you're an I'm important guy. Let me tell you the thing. There's a buzz in town right now. I don't want to wait till summer to act on the buzz. I want the banners up next week. People see it coming. 
okay. is coming. Yeah. Okay. And then he, he is okay. committed to make that his project this summer. This is going to be a massive mural. It's going to be beautiful. Okay. Coffee bills reawakening will be grand. I'll All the trash can it, logos. I mean, we're, it, I want it to start now. Yeah. Well, how are we going to keep this thing going? Well, I mean, let's talk about that. It starts with you well, guys. It starts not with us, no, that, not really. Yeah, we use that policy we're in, but how are we going to keep... If you sat down with the, the 15 or 20 young, you young people we've talked to, who are, we've recruited to help us, you'd be, you'd be resting short of that. We have to be involved. We, we have to be involved. Right. Right. That we, are, we are giving them a lot of rope to work on this stuff with, with our help and guidance. And I, I'll be very surprised if there's any problem keeping Going. If we need to jumpstart some people, this group understands execution. We're That's pretty good at jumpstarting. Right. We understand execution is an issue for most towns, especially Coffeeville. So we are committed to seeing through. Hey, I'm fine. I'm, there, there's a link here I'm missing, okay? And it's the funding and it's the investment. And I like to know more about that. We haven't okay. talked about it. Okay. That's not okay. okay. We've been here three yeah. days. We don't yeah. have the funding yeah. That's, that's what I'm ready to get that's to. That's that what for. they're. Jim, you're exactly right. It's essential. We're all over it. We're not ready to talk to you yet about it. Yeah, but that you know, the later. people out here that know Billings, they're all doing all they can now. You know, I mean, and there'll be more if, if more happens. And I'll a, lot of more. Piece, a lot of pieces of the no. funding puzzle. One is what Justin said. We're going to come back and help Justin and the leadership group. A light of fire under the alumni there okay. to see if they okay. can help us. There are a lot of pieces to that. I want to add one more thing, just yes. in fairness to the youth. Every year in class, I ask the youth that come in that millennial age, what would you like to see with the downtown? And every single one of them say, I'd love to live in a loft apartment. Mm -hmm. There's a few. Yes. Um, yes. But every single one, without a doubt, they're like, man, I would love to live down there. We, we, we met a half dozen of these young business owners who either are already living above their businesses uh -huh. Uh -huh. or improving the properties. A couple of them said, we're afraid about improving the properties because we can't pay any more taxes, so we're not sure. We heard that. Yeah, yeah. But what you're saying is exactly what's in the mind of yeah. the millennial generation in this town. Yeah. It's exactly. And we ought we to work with them. How long is this meeting going to last? Uh, we're done. We're, no, we're done. Oh, I got, no, we're not either. We're here as long as you want us. Okay. Well, here, let me finish. We've been here a little bit. I know there's some people out here that are invested in downtown. I know there's people that might have a question. I think we ought to open up for a little dialogue for a few minutes. I have one more thing. So, so the one thing I would like to add to it is, is, is can we get a timeline? Because, you know, it, it's what we're talking about are all great things. But are we talking, I know you had said the next two months. Let's, let's try to put a timeline. Let's put our wants out there and a timeline to each one of these wants. So we want to do this, and we want to do it by this time. We want this, and we want to do it by this time. So let's try to put a timeline so that we, you know, is this a one-year plan, or is this a 10-year plan? Let's try to put some... 25. Let's see. Well, I don't know what it is. I, I mean, mean, because I don't know... I mean, I mean, this is we get the whole town down like Barnesville, Oklahoma? We don't... I, I know we don't want to set an end, right? Because we want to continue to progress, right? So there's no end, but for each one of these steps, we steps to that process are exactly right to be doing this, and I haven't talked to them on their schedules. But to me, we'd like to have about three months to work on tax and funding ideas and come back and talk to you, so I'm thinking if this commission were willing to see us in late April, mm -hmm. early May, uh, put us on your calendar, we'll be here. Absolutely. And, you let us and, 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 and we'll be, you and Jim have both raised some things that are quite proper. We'll have more to talk about. We're going to do a lot of work between now and then. I just don't want to get out in front of our skis with stuff until yeah. we talk to the tax people. I, I don't disagree. Uh, I, I, don't I do disagree. want some immediate action items. That's the cleaning and the murals. Yeah. And, I, and those are, those are, and I, and the, the those are small things, but they have a lot of the bang. The festival we raise, uh, some, some, something, we have something ought to go on in downtown with live band, music, barbecue stops, some, uh, all the restaurants in town participate in something like that every summer uh, to, to start getting the message out to the Montgomery County, not just Coffee Bill. Downtown Coffee Bill is coming back. And it's a fun place to be. Right. And I hope something, I can't tell you who's going to head that up yet, right. but I hope this summer something like that happens downtown. Well, it will. And we have a lot of people who have quit and stayed, who have gotten re-engaged in the last couple of weeks. Yeah. So, so yeah. Well, it, I, it's, I don't want to sound like it's a real, it, I said 25 years. 
This town, we'll be lucky if we can get this town done in, in a lot of years. It takes a lot of time. I mean, I'm talking I really, think, really I think, I'm I talking done revitalizing where we're kind of like we're where we need to be. I, That's what I meant by that. Can I? So but, I think that's a different point. Right. It's a different I, point. I, I think, and, and, and I think Chris said it a minute ago, it was, maybe it was Anne Marie. Our job is not a 25 year job. Our job right. is to turn the ship and I get coffee book on the upswing. Yeah. It'll start taking care of itself. I agree. If we, haven't I agree. Done, if we haven't done that in a couple of years, we're not going to get it done. Right. That, that's not. If 25 years to completely right. Right. awesome the town, that's what I'm our role is a two to three year role, in my, right. in my right. judgment. No, I'm with you there. Yeah. I didn't mean. You're making a great point. Yeah. You know what I mean. We could actually sit and hash this out for hours. It's, a lot of this conversation would be better in a small group. Yeah. I mean, we have a lot of people here right now, so we really probably should be talking at a 30,000 foot level instead of a 2,000 foot Agreed. level, you know, ground level. So I think you made a good point. If anybody has comments or would like to stand up and say something, I think this would be a great opportunity or time to, to do that. Can I start first by asking the city leaders and community leaders here to look at the camera and smile and over <laughs> You could have done that earlier. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So many volunteers and people want to be involved in something, but we got all of them on the green lock instead. And that's something that people want to help. It's fabulous, but it's fun. And the young people, the story about Joe Ferguson and Justin, it's thank you now. Here's you know, the mentor of Joe Ferguson, the young man there, and having them to work here to build partners. The coffee go away. out to those people that are, are thumbs that have really done well and maybe they want to sponsor a bench and that it don't because every little dime we're going to need is going to come by tough so that's just the way it is right. so everything we can think outside the box because I, I, how cool would that be to have a beautiful beautiful uh, bench there and got your name on it sponsored by this family for my grandma that grew up there or something right. like that. I think that would be an awesome yes. way to do that in you guys were there from here, very lucky. I, I didn't raise, I wasn't raised here. I would have loved to have been because then I, then I'm glad I had to play at KU instead. But that's okay. I'm, but it's, but this is a great you town. Here this is a great town, and, and and once this thing gets going, but I'll tell you what, downtown is where it happens because you can take a big city. I'm from Houston, man. When they put the Toyota Center in downtown, all the garbage that was around there got tore down. They built up restaurants and. Now they got the Astros playing there, the World Champs, but uh, it's a uh, it, it's a uh, great. Uh, I mean, going downtown is fun, yeah. and if you get that going again, you're gonna get your young people involved. Because if I drove through here with a business and I drove through downtown, I ain't bringing my business there. But we're gonna have to work on the tax things. I got some tax ideas I share later, but you, you, you got to think about it like this: if you're a business owner, you drive through downtown right now, you're gonna go, "This town just looks like crap." Not to be ugly, it does. But if that downtown's looking good, and then you start working on the rest of the town, it's going to increase people coming here. And when people come here, they spend money. I don't care if it's for, for the fair of the rodeo, and that's what we need. I mean, it ain't, it ain't the job market thing. That's all fine and dandy, but that will come if you get that downtown up and going. And it's going to be tough. We're going to have to t tighten our belts, but it can be done. Right. I've seen it done in other small towns and go, wow. I want to pick someone out of the crowd. Bob, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, he raised his hand. So, up, so. Yes. So, uh, Denise and I have had the honor and privilege to be involved in this in the last couple of days, and, and it has uh, it's been tremendous. And uh, I want to thank uh, Mr. Bill Pratt and Mr. Bill Wade and Peggy and, and Ron and, and uh, Jamie and, and Alan as well. So, uh, it's, it's been tremendous. And to see the momentum bias for action, which is what has been missed in most of these incentives, is a bias for action to get things done. And you're not seeing that with this group. It, it is a, it, it does tremendous. So, um, I don't look for it to cease at that moment. I think it will be. And, and I'm just glad to be a part of it. You all need to understand.
understand how instrumental Denise and Bob have been. And, and we'll, we call on Denise almost every day. She and I run the phone. <laughs> they are tremendous for this town, both of them. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. One, one thing I, and this is probably not quite the way to do that. I appreciate what you guys are doing. And you guys, and, and granted, you, you have a, 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 a but some, at some point, including myself, everyone here that lives here at the moment, are going to have to pick up the ball and run with it. It's not just going to have to be the folks that have lived here in the past. It's going to have to be. It's going to have to be us. Thing is, is that I've said this multiple times um, while I've been on this commission, and we, and I, I said it in kind of a more broader spectrum, but now I'm narrowing it down. We are, we're going to either sink or swim in this shit together, Correct. because it, it's not going to be just up to these folks here to carry the torch forward. It's going to have to be all of, I don't want to say us and them. But it's going to have to be, it, it is us. It's us that, that, that live here, and, and, and uh, we're going to have to pick up that ball and roll. And, and I'm, in, I'm encouraged. And I think you guys are, are you know, basically uh, injecting the shot of adrenaline to get this thing rolling. But it, it's going to take all of us, too, to be there and to uh, keep the ball rolling. Absolutely. I had to step out of your guys' meeting the other day. We hadn't got there yet, but the meeting that you had over here. Um, yes. Because Mac, you know, John Ashley Campbell had a third party consultant come in and, and do and one of the things, kind of to piggyback on what Chris said, is, you know, we've got to change the culture. We've got to get out of that mindset of, uh, this is just kind of how Southeast Kansas is, and this is how coffee do setting to talk about a subject. We, we, have, all, we, we have not. Uh, I do believe that is something that Mark has on the agenda yeah. to do this where, year. Where you invite everybody who pays taxes and lives in this town to come for a couple hours and talk we, about We future. haven't had one recently, but we have had some in the past. Right. Prior to... If you did that and never wanted us to participate, we would be delighted to be part of that. We don't need to be, but... Sure. Well, 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 there was well, one after the oh, party. You know, we, we got a good start here. Love it, love it, love it. What are we, when are we going to meet again? And then, I mean, you're a good, you, you love Coxville. You're coming back. I suggested April. April. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay. I got a couple of weeks to stay with her. By mid April, I'll be able to fly here. Well, you are a leader. You know that. She's the lead. Let's be clear. She's your associate. I would say these two. They're the local, local uh, representative council. Local council. One more. Go ahead. Okay. I just want to make a statement. Um, I want to just let everybody know how much I thoroughly appreciate the fact that Bill Pratt and Bill Wade are here tonight. People like Peggy Steele, Jenny DeBoer Gillis, Anne Marie. Taylor are people that I've looked up to my whole life. Um, those are the people that I aspire to be like in the future. I am a community leader and I'm happy to wear many hats in this town. I am 
so happy because I have the dime for other people that are my age to step up. And you have lit a fire. A fire that I couldn't light, a fire that other people couldn't light. And I praise you and I commend you. Let's go Pompey Hill. Yay. Yay. together a two-day session that turned into a three-day session that was preliminary to Bill's involvement with the debate squad. Because originally, Daryl, weren't you the one that brought Bill back to the debate? That was Janie. Oh, Janie. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, I'm not I sure how that, Dar Dar I'm not sure Darryl how that connection... Darryl and I were together for a couple of years okay. on the debate program and club. Because I was a what, debater. I, Bill, we've never talked about this, but I heard a rumor that you became a debater because you, you weren't a swimmer. Right. <laughs> I wanted to be Bill Wade. You wanted to be Bill Wade. I, I know we never talked about it, and I don't want to embarrass him. You know how great he is. But I heard he couldn't be a swimmer, so he became a debater. Is he a great debater? Yeah. I think it served him well. So. Hey, it's a good thing she's his friend. That's right. That's right. What a great debater. So we put together an agenda, and Bill really wanted to leave it fairly open, so we did. But we had enough structure that we could introduce him to many significant people in Coffeeville, mainly the business owners and the property owners downtown. And so, thanks to the Yorks, we, we, had, had, 17 of them. we had 17 people show up at what, Denise? Close to 30. We had close to 30. Oh, I was thinking that first meeting, I thought it was 30. We had, most of the people downtown came to that 7 o'clock meeting. Counsel, counselor, you need to get your numbers. <laughs> I'm a lawyer. I say whatever it fits at the time. You need to work on that counsel. God bless you. I'm glad that you weren't a swimmer, and I'm glad you were the We lady. are so thankful. You became a trial so lawyer. Thankful. So that you knew how to talk to a judge, oh, and, you know, right. and that means you know how to talk to people. That's, that's, that's right. the reason why I've been sitting and quietly listening to all the things I was hoping that I would want to say. This man That's right. knows how to say it. He shuts it down. <laughs> He's an absolute blessing to Thank us you. all. Thank you. Yes. So, so we put together an agenda, and we had between 17 and 30 people show up for the business owner and property owner meeting, and it was a delight. And so, thank you, Yorks. And, um, and many of them were young people. And we didn't know what their attitude would be because, you know, sometimes people get negative and complain. But people were so enthusiastic, and we took the information in, and then we scheduled a series of meetings, one-to-one -one or one-to-group, um, getting more information from the business owners or property owners, as well as several other meetings. Now, we also started a video to try to capture the stories of Coffeeville, because one of the things that happened in that November meeting with that small group of people that came back, they started telling their stories. And people said, you know, we've got to capture these, because... When the children go away, the stories are gone. So uh, Linda Moley at Coffeeville College decided that she would appoint a group, and we had Bill Pratt and KGGF interviewed today. And while we were doing the interviews and videotaping so that we could capture those stories, many people showed up at the door that we weren't expecting. And so it was organized chaos. I, I know you said that I was a little scattered, but... I'm going to talk about that later because it really wasn't. I would scattered. take a little out of the seconds. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. It's all good because you know what? What happened was this amazing energy that evolved at KGGF, not only around the interviews but around Coffeeville and what we could do. Mark showed up and we started talking about 
the plans, and that evolved to look at, okay, what can we do and can't we do, and where do we need the commission? And you guys are key. So as a result of all of the things that have happened this week, and Mark's involvement, thank you, and Mike's involvement, we knew that until we talked to you and we had leadership, because you're the leaders of our town, that would be aligned and move forward and not afraid, courageous, because you got to find the money, because we know there's economic development dollars. So you guys need to look at that budget. Until you can move forward and free up those resources and understand how it connects, we really couldn't do much. So we've got the people, we've got the energy, we're ready to go. We need your leadership. That's what's happened and that's why we're here tonight. Okay. Thank you, Peggy. You yes, bet. Thank you. Yes, I just want to thank, thank you guys for being able on such short notice to come here tonight. Oh, it's not a problem. Thank you for your time. Listen, because we, you know, we I know. don't really have a message to anyone. It's been a pleasure. We Paul. appreciate it. Thank very you. much. It's, very it's a chance Carla, in a lifetime for all of you us. You don't want to say anything. Come on, Carla. You go, girl. I, I think it's great. Wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> and I think the boundaries ought to make the, the supports for the benches because they can do cast Oh, that's a great that's idea. That's a very good idea. That's a there great idea. And, and Joe Ferguson put, can do the they one. They can put their uh, name on it. Oh, my God. That's a great idea. Yeah. So we can have those done by this time next week. If you don't. Yeah. 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 Bam. That's your freaking yeah. yeah. and, and, and we'll buy the first yeah. banner. Mary yeah. Mary's real people buy your first banner. It yeah. can't cost over a couple hundred dollars. Sponsor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we'll take you I'll buy half of it. Okay. <laughs> I'd like to say one thing. We're talking about the next meeting being like maybe April. But I wanted to, to say that there, there will be updates, right? We'll be updating. And um, as things are, are happening, um, I've already gotten approval to have a column in the Coffeeville Journal for city development. Okay. Yay. Yeah. And, and also an education column, also rotating leaders in, in the district. Can, can, We're going to do something similar for city development. Can, can we please brand those columns as Coffeeville's Reawakening? I want, I want that phrase. City development, Coffeeville's Reawakening. I really, I, I think that, I think people respond well to that phrase. It captures exactly what we're doing. Yes. City development sounds like a textbook. Well, no, I'm not being. I love the journal. It was my, it was Coffee my Bills way Reawakening <laughs> is what it's going to be. Hey, the column on, on city call. development, right? I mean, it's pretty obvious. So, yeah. I hope so, we can use that phrase as much as possible I, I in think the press. So. I don't see why not. Great. So I'm curious, Andy. You're really key to all of this. I read your paper from front page to back page. So. How can you help us? What can you do and what questions do you have? Uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Put you on the spot. Huh? Y'all should have heard his speech at the MLK event. Really? Yeah. Spectacular. That's the better, by the way. And, and Taylor, <laughs> Vice Mayor Taylor, was saying the same thing at the city meeting last night. Yes. so important that we don't have a mentality in town that we've got, these are right about health care, the great asset for this town. We have the supporters here, and we've got the downtown, and there's everybody. Is, this is the Coffeeville boat, and anything we can do with our efforts that helps advance that sounds great. Anything the people involved in that can do to help us sounds great. So that there's no work at cross-purposes, we try to work together. 
Now, I know there's only so many dollars to go around. We've got to work through that. That's the job of our leaders. But I just hope that all these different constituencies, including the regional medical center, work as one to turn this town around. And you're probably right. The biggest asset we have on day one is what you're talking about. That's a great point. Well, and but another thing, we really need eventually, and I know this sounds like pie in the sky, to really look at ourselves as Southeast Kansas as a county, because we have so much to offer as a county. And we've all grown up with independence as our rival. But really, when it really comes down to it, as a county, we have a lot to offer. And at some point, we need to really get that and work together. So while we're looking at Coffee Bill, you know, we will. Well, really I came home 25 years ago, and our mission and our newspaper business was to try to turn down the walls. Yeah, you uh, bet. You know, so you know what? We're all for that. Uh, and it's hard to do that. We're all for that. that. That's They were here when we grew up. They, they were. They were. Exactly. As, as a county, we're 35,000 people strong. Yeah. Absolutely. That's all we got. As a community, we are 35,000 people strong. You have to quit building them before you can start tearing them down. Yeah. 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 Building them down. Yeah. 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 Trish, do you have anything to say? I'm not leaving yet. Yeah. You're on the next one on my list. I mean, you just made one nice point. Well, anything you want to add to what Trish said? I think that's all I have to add. I think that's all I have to add. Anything you can add? Well, I, and anybody I, else as far as that goes, I think we, we unless everybody just got to get out of here, we could take two or three more. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, we all know, I, I mean, Coffee Bill's my home as well, and I love this community. But I think it's interesting that the synergy that happened this week is MAC was doing our countywide economic development strategic plan virtually the same two days you were doing your Coffee Bill reawakening. And, and I think that it's clear that the mindset, not just in Coffeeville, but the entire county is all in that same mindset, that it's time that we all work together to move this area forward. And the assets that this county has is unrivaled in, in Southeast Kansas, in the four state region. It's really incredible what we have in our county. And if we all do break down those traditional barriers that we've seen, this north, south, that we can all thrive in a way that we've never seen before if we can all get in the same boat. So, well just, yeah, well said. and I agree, economic development is all of it. And economic development can't happen unless all of these things happen simultaneously together. Yeah. You do have to have the big business, but you have to have the small business. You have to have um, the downtown and the retail and the thriving <coughs> and the quality of life and the housing. But we all have to work together at the same time to put it all together. The, and having a team that covers all of those is key. The Amazon experience, I hope, taught people in the town that uh, big companies that are not tied historically to this town and who want to come here and employ our people are going to be here until somebody else offers them a dollar more. And I'm not, Amazon's a great company. I know Jeff Bezos came to visit here. One of my, rel my wife's brothers worked at Amazon. But they didn't stay when it became in their interest to leave. Uh, uh, if we jumpstart 10 or 15 small businesses in the next three years in downtown Coffeeville with our local, with, your, with our friends and neighbors, your friends and neighbors who care about this town, they're not going to leave in the first time there's a, a bad month. That's the heart and soul of the town. And then all of a sudden, the town becomes more attractive to the Tysons of the world. Hey, there's something going on in that town. We may want to put our people there. I think that the start is the downtown and then the big businesses in that well, order. You know, I've heard Trish say it numerous times in MAC meetings and coming and seeing the city commission. You know, if 10 companies come to Coffeeville that employ 100 people, we lose one, that's not good. But it doesn't impact 1,000 people. If they, you know, because if that one company leaves, it, 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 that's that's hard to recover from. Yeah, I mean, we've well, seen it from Amazon and Southwire. You know that that was. And that they was will the leave when they get a better deal somewhere else because they're not. They don't. They don't, they don't have that the loyalty's time. not there. Right. So, Mr. I mean, Avery, I need to talk to you about something, if you don't mind. I want to, I want to say one thing. Um, one thing that hadn't been mentioned here tonight. And I've, I've got my friend has taught me a little bit. There's a, there's a there's an association, a group that's a nationwide. And Carla, maybe you might know what it is. Maybe Haley or someone like that knows what it is. But they, they it's an association, or, or a, yeah, it's an association for revitalization of downtowns. And one of the things that hasn't been talked about tonight, you talk about the young people, there's books on this stuff. And I, 
you, some of you might listen to NPR and they talk about these revitalizations. They have all these specialists come on. I mean, there's people, books on revitalization downtown. We had it here. Well, this isn't Main Street. This is other. That's, that's, well, that's, you're right on that one, but there's another one. But there's books on how to do it. And I'm not going to read it. Okay, but these young people, you know, these young people, they want to learn. It's one element that, you know, that I've, I've been taught in the last year or so about, and I hear about it, but they go to trade associations and they got speakers, and there's just so much that this. I said 25 years ago, you know, 25 million, throw that on, and millions to redo these old towns. I mean, I mean, I just, it's a big deal. And it's just going to take a whole lot of effort, a lot of tenacity, on and on and on. And I'd like to see some of the young people get involved in these associations and training on it so they can bring that back here. That's just the only thing I want to say I'm done, I promise. But it's being done right now in our own county and in our neighboring communities right now. We're seeing um, downtown Independence. They've had a couple businesses, a, a city commissioner that's gone in, and they've bought several buildings in their own blood, sweat, and tears my mom would say elbow grease, cleaning up those downtown buildings. Bartlesville, Crystal, what they did with that building downtown, it's phenomenal. And it is being done in our area, so we have great templates. Yeah. Well, I'm not, Andy, I'm glad Andy brought up what he did. There's so many links in this chain to our community. And downtown is very important to me. I mean, the hospital is more important, yes. But downtown is pretty darn close to it. And, and we're not, it's a draw. I just, I want to see these downtowns. And, I, I just, I'm just excited about it. Uh, I like the reawakening deal. We're all, we're all in. I, everybody's here for that reason. So I want to continue the meetings and and do what I can uh, as far as that goes. I mean, I know everybody's. We got people sitting down. There's putting hundreds of thousands in their buildings up and down Eighth and Ninth and all over town. And and the, you know, we got a nice community. Uh, there's been a, there was a deal talking about coming from Pahaska to Coffeyville on a tourism deal. I don't know how many people might have heard about that, but I heard about that recently. But, there, you know, this Dalton thing, like Bill Curtis said, we can build on that. Uh, we got the refinery for, you know, we're lucky we got that. We got John Deere. We got, we're the third most industrial county in the state, okay? And uh, you've heard me talk about Coffeyville being a dirty blue collar community. <coughs> Uh, it sounds a little negative, but we're, we're a very industrial <laughs> little community, and we just all got to keep working at it, you know, work, work, work. So, anything on closing, Bill? We appreciate it. <laughs> this is short notice, so we were amazed you were able to do this. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to thank everyone for coming out tonight. We truly appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank you.
look into that. Yeah, I, yeah, it's definitely worth looking into. How do they change with that? Right. Yeah. yeah, because you know that the city doesn't have any control over that. I know for sure. I mean, no, the city doesn't have any control over that portion. Everybody thinks so. they. Oh, well, of course, the city is the devil, but they You know, it's a, it's amazing. It's amazing what we. I, I say blamed. And that's probably not the right word, but what we get blamed for. In the oh, you're the you're the closest one. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. We're just the listening ears. Yeah, exactly. You got to go. Okay, go there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and so we were talking about a plan and making sure we get everything updating the city comprehensive plan, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of business things. Plan. steps we got to get done. Yeah. Like grant writers. Yeah. I think. Well, I think. What was that? Will do a great job. Of course. No, 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 no.